All right, let's get going with level two. You can do it. So we are going to talk about something called the, like irregular shapes. So these are going to be all kind of funky looking shapes and we're going to find the area of them. So the way I think about these shapes is that it's really taking shapes we already know and they're smooshing them together somehow. Okay, so we want to follow along with each problem and show all work. And if you need to pause or rewind the video, please do so. But we're going to jump into this first problem. So we have this kind of funky looking shape right here, okay? Well, what I try and do is I try and make sh shapes, like familiar shapes, out of the shapes I see here. So if I look, I can very easily draw a line across here. You can do a solid line or a dashed line, however you want. And when I do that, it creates what we call a rectangle here and then a parallelogram down here. Well, we know how to find the area of those shapes, so let's just do those two pieces separately and then we'll be able to find the area of the whole shape by putting those areas together. Now keep in mind, these are not drawn to scale, so we're just going to go off the measurements that they have here for us, okay? So I'm going to start easy with the rectangle here. If I look, right, if I kind of follow this outline here, and if it helps you to draw that with your pencil on your shape, feel free to do that. But otherwise, um, I'm looking that the length of this rectangle here is 6, and the width is Eight. So we're going to do the rectangle first and do 8 times 6 equals 48 centimeters squared. Always use your labels, centimeters squared. Okay, so that's going to represent the rectangle. Feel free to pause the video or rewind how I got that, but you need to make sure you're writing these notes just like you see them here. Okay, so that was the area for the rectangle here. So now I need to also find the area of this shape, which looks like a parallelogram now that I've kind of sectioned it off here, if you look at me outlining the shape. Okay, so when I'm looking at a parallelogram, I need the base and the height. Well, I know that the base, right, like along the top and bottom here, are the same. Well, this top line here is the same as the top line here, which is 6. So the base of my parallelogram is going to be 6. Now to get that height, remember the height always has to be perpendicular to the base. That means I'm going to draw a line straight up and down, okay, perpendicular to that base. Now I could have drawn that here, I could have drawn it over here, it really doesn't matter as long as it's perpendicular to the base. So to figure out this measurement, because it does not tell us this, we can use some of the numbers that are already here. So from the top of this original shape to the bottom, it says it's 12 centimeters. And then I know that this much, so the part that represents the rectangle, is already 8 centimeters. Okay, I'm already getting that from here to here. So to go the rest of the way has to be the rest of this 12. So what I do is I take this 12 and I subtract 8 from it to end up with 4 centimeters left. So the height of the parallelogram is 4 centimeters. So we're going to take the base, which is 6, times the height, which is 4, to get a parallelogram that has 24 centimeters squared. Okay, so now we individually found out these areas. So the rectangle is 48, the parallelogram is 24. So now we need to add them together to figure out the area of the whole original shape. So we get 48 plus 24 is 72 centimeters squared. Okay, if you need to do that work off to the side lining it up, please feel free to do that. Okay, so again, we just found the individual shapes and then added them together. So let's try that on another one. Now, if you need to go back, please do, otherwise I'm going on. So let's try this next one. So I know this problem's on here twice. It's because I want to show you two different ways that you could go about solving this problem. Really, there's three, um, but I will discuss two of them in this one, and then I'll show you the other options. So this first option is what we call breaking it into parts, which is called decomposing a shape. So you're breaking it down into parts, kind of like we did on the last one. So if I look at this funky shape here, I could make rectangles out of this funky shape. You can do that a couple of different ways. Okay. I could draw a line straight across here and end up with a rectangle here, here, and here. Or I could do them up and down. It really doesn't matter if you want to challenge yourself and try doing it the opposite way that we're about to do it and see if you get the same answer, feel free. Um, but if you want to just do it the way we're going to do it, that's fine too. So personally, this is just how my brain works. I chose to draw lines here and here to create these longer rectangles on the side. Okay, like just like this. 
And then I have the smaller rectangle in the middle. So I have three rectangles that I'm trying to add up. Okay. Now, if you want to try it where you're going this direction, that's fine. You're going to get a little bit different numbers, but your answer should be the same if you did it correctly. So if you want to try that, go ahead and pause the video, and then you can see what our answer is. If you want to just keep going with us, let's go ahead. So I'm going to do these first longer ones, and then I'll deal with this middle one in a second. So when I look, these rectangles have a width of 4 and a length of 11, so I'm doing 4 times 11. So that first rectangle, 4 times 11, gives me 44 meters squared. That's what that M means. Okay, and then I have the exact same rectangle over here, so that rectangle is also going to be 4 times 11, which is also 44 meters squared. Okay, so then I have this little piece here. So I know that this distance right here is 6 meters based off what they gave me here. So now I just need to figure out, well, what's the width of this rectangle? Well, if I look all the way, it says 11 meters, and this much of it, up until the part I need, is 9 meters. So I need whatever the leftovers are, to give me the height of this piece. So I do 11 minus 9 to end up with 2, so this is 2 meters. If you want to think of it the other way, you could think 2 plus the 9 gets us to the 11, right, putting those pieces together. So this rectangle is 6 times 2, so we've got 12 meters squared for that last one. So those are my three different rectangle pieces. Now I just need to add them together, like we did before. So we're going to take 44, plus another 44, plus 12, to get, try it in your head if you can, 100 meters squared. Okay, right at 100. Now, if you tried it the other way where you cut them across here instead, you should have gotten the same answer. You might have been adding up different pieces, but you should get the same answer. If not, maybe try going back and rewatching it with us. Okay, now we're going to try this one one more time, and I know this is the exact same shape, so we know our answer should be 100 meters squared. But let's show you another way to do it. So what we can do is subtract the areas. What we, this is called composing. So basically we make it into a shape, and then we take away the part that we didn't really need. So let me show you. Okay, if I kind of ignore the inside part here, right? Like if I imagine this as one big rectangle by connecting the line here, okay? So if I look at this big rectangle here, okay? I could um, find the area of this big rectangle and then take away the part that I don't need. So we could work just a little differently than last time. So if I do this big rectangle, I know that I've got 11 along the sides here. And then I need to do 4 plus this 6, right? Because it's kind of like I almost scooch this line up here. So 4 plus 6 is 10, plus this other 4 here, so 14. So I could do 14 times 11. And I'm going to go ahead and help you out. It's 154 meters squared. If you want to try that work off to the side, feel free. Otherwise, let's keep going. So that's the rectangle. That's like the big rectangle. So that was composing it into that shape. So now I want to... Um, also figure out what this rectangle is right here so that I can take that away because this is the extra space that's not a part of the original shape. So when we look, the part of the uh, measurement is 6 and then the other one is 9. So we want to do 6 times 9 to get 54 meters squared. So that's the space right here that we do not need. So we are going to, instead of adding them together, we're going to subtract the extra. So we're going to subtract this extra 54 meters squared from this piece in here that we don't need. So we're going to take 154 minus 54, easy math, 100. And that was what we got before. So both ways work. Okay. So this was called composing. This last one was decomposing. We still got the same answer either way. You're just either breaking the shape down into pieces and adding them up or you're kind of adding on to the piece and taking away what you don't need. Now you can't always do composing depending on the shape. Sometimes it makes it a little more complicated, but this one happened to work out. It's kind of just however your brain works. So let's try one more real quick. Okay, this is a trapezoid. I'm going to show you a way that we can do this. Now there is an area um, formula for trapezoids. We're just not going to learn it. We're going to use our knowledge of rectangles and triangles. Okay, so when we look I can kind of already see how it's starting to break into a rectangle here in the center, okay, and then these two triangles on the side, okay, and so I want to figure out first this rectangle piece, okay, so I've got my 10 along here, 
and I got four here. So the rectangle is going to be 10 times four to get 40 inches squared. That's what I have for the rectangle here. So now we need to figure out the triangle. Well, I'm not going to use the 16 because that's the whole way across. We only need the base of the triangle. So just right here, right? These are the parts that we're talking about. Well, in order to figure that out, we need to take out this 10 inches right here that we're already using as a part of the rectangle. So we need to do 16 minus those 10 inches, okay? So we end up with six. However, that's being split equally between this triangle and this triangle. So we need to take that six divided by two to get three. So each one of these bases of this triangles is three. So now we need to figure out the um, area of this triangle. And when we do triangles, remember, the biggest rule to remember is to divide by two. So we need to do base, which is three, times the height, which is four, right? Same thing as over here. So three times four, and then divide by two. So three times four is 12, divide by two is six. So triangle one is six, but then we also have the triangle over here, so that one is also six. Now, we just add them all together. So we do 40 plus six plus six, and that gets us 52 inches squared, and that's our answer. Okay, if you need to go back and look at any of these, please feel free. I know this was a little bit of a longer video, but it was really showing you a range of irregular shapes that you can find the area of. So you have three more practice problems to try on your own. If you get stuck, please go back and rewatch the video first and use your notes in this 2E section to help you before you ask questions from a teacher or a, or a friend. Okay, but you got three problems here. Check your answers with the answer key and then go get your quick check. You can do it. Try a variety of ways to do it, but I know you're going to make it.